Hello again! Today I want to try to explain to you the science behind plant growth in Minecraft. That means after this video you should at least in theory be able to optimize your personal farms. The first thing you need to know is that in every single game tick, Minecraft chooses a few random blocks and makes a special update on them. This is used for example to freeze water to ice and also for plant growth. So if in this video I refer to an update, I mean this random update. The next thing you need to know is that every single block in Minecraft has two very important values. At first the ID, which tells us which block it is in the first place. And secondly the meter data, often referred to as damage value. It can save additional information about this block. For example, those wool blocks all have the same ID but different metadatas. Let's have a look at farmland. The metadata of farmland tells us if it's hydrated or not. If farmland gets a random update and a water source is nearby, the metadata gets set to 7. And if there's no water nearby, the metadata gets decreased by 1. As soon as it reaches 0, that means this farmland is dry. And if it now gets a random update and there's no water source, the farmland gets resetted to dirt. But how can you hydrate farmland? Well, solution one would be rain. If there's not a single block above the farmland and it's raining, the farmland can get hydrated. Solution two, water. If there's a water source block or floating water in a 9x9 area around the farmland or in the layer above, the farmland gets hydrated on the next update. Now to our first plant, wheat. The first thing it does after it gets a random update is checking the light level directly above it. If it's 9 or higher it can grow. Then it calculates its own growth rate. To do that it analyzes the 9 blocks under it, so the 1 block it's directly placed on as well as the 8 blocks around. Our growth rate starts with a value of 1. Now for every dry farmland around the wheat we add 0.25 to that number. For every hydrated farmland we add 0.75. And for the block the wheat is placed on we add 1 if it's not hydrated and 3 if it's hydrated. But now this number can decrease again if we have placed our wheat in the wrong shape. You can place your wheat in the dark or the light blue area. But if you place wheat in at least one of the dark and the light blue area, or if you place wheat in one of the red corners, your final score gets cut in half. Our growth rate now gets used in a random call. If you are interested in the math, we take 25 divided by our growth rate, round it down, add 1, and then we divide 1 by our growth rate. And that's our chance for the wheat to grow to the next stage. That means in best case scenario we have a chance of approximately 33% that our wheat will grow on an update. Melons and pumpkins work basically the same way as wheat. Only difference is that once they finish growing they use the growth algorithm to produce melons and pumpkins. Which means that a higher growth rate equals a higher production rate for melons and pumpkins. When melon or pumpkin stems try to produce new fruits they first check the four surrounding blocks. If there's at least one block of the same type they try to create, they stop. So a melon stem gets blocked by another melon next to it, but not by a pumpkin. Now they choose randomly one of the four surrounding blocks. If it's air and the block below is either grass, dirt or farmland, a new pumpkin or melon gets created. To our next plant, sugarcane. That's a really simple one. Every time it gets a random update it checks if the block above it is air. If so it checks also if there are not more than one sugarcane blocks below. That's where the high limit of 3 comes from. Now one of two things can happen. Number one, the meter data is below 15. That means the meter data just gets increased by one and the plant waits for the next update. If the meter data is already 15, the next sugarcane gets created above it. Which of course starts with meter data 0 and now counts up to 15 again. Cacti work exactly the same way as sugarcane. They drop blocks if they are growing next to other blocks, but that doesn't influence the growing. 
Netherwart has four stages of growing, at a constant growing rate. On every single random update they get, they have a 10% chance to grow to the next stage. In previous versions it were only able to grow in the nether, but in the current snapshots it can also grow in the overworld. And to our final plant, mushrooms. They only have a 4% chance to start their growing algorithm, and if they start they first count the number of other mushrooms of the same kind in a 9x9x3 area around them. So red ones only count the red ones and the brown mushrooms only count the brown ones. The maximum number of mushrooms allowed in this area is 4, including themselves. For the next part, a random block in a 3x3x3 three by three by three area around the mushroom, including the mushroom and the block it's placed on, gets chosen. In this process, the probability to pick a block in the middle layer is higher than the probability to pick a block in the bottom or top layer. To make it easier in the following example, we will assume that only blocks from the middle layer, which means only on the same high as the mushroom, get picked. If the newly chosen block is at a valid position for a mushroom, the algorithm will continue from this new position on. Otherwise it will continue from the old position, which means in this case from the mushroom. A position is valid for a mushroom if it's either an air block above mycelium, like in this case, or an air block with a light level below 13 on an opaque block. Since it was a valid one, the algorithm now can choose one of these 3x3x3 three by three by three blocks around the new position. And this continues four times. Which means that the algorithm in total can travel from valid position to valid position five times in a row, starting from the mushroom. If now the last chosen position is a valid one, a mushroom gets placed. That's all for today. I hope you had a bit of fun and maybe learned something new. So thanks for watching and see you next time.